Hi everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to Kennel Tips and Tricks. Now this is going to be the first video I launch in this series and I want to focus on the most important thing in any kennel operation, the dog run. Now in my facility I have indoor outdoor runs and then I have a room with exclusive indoor runs and then I have exclusive outdoor runs as well. Then up the hill I have my house with my private kennel that I use for special needs and other things. Now I don't want to get too much into detail with too many things, there's just way too much to cover. That can be in future videos. So today what we're going to focus on is designing a kennel run for efficiencies and safety. And I broke it down into four areas of interest. So number one, designing a kennel run that is easy to clean. And I think if we all got together we'd agree that that's a very important one. Let's say we're cleaning kennels out. We're doing quick cleans. We want to clean them out as fast as possible. Let's say it should take us two minutes, but because of design and efficiencies, it's taken us six or ten minutes per kennel. Well, if you're a large facility and you got a lot of dog runs, we'll add that up for the day, the week, the month, the year. That's a lot of time wasted. So that's number one, designing a kennel run for, uh, that is easy to clean. Okay, number two, reducing tension between dogs from one dog run to the next. And especially if you have chain links separating the dogs. Boy, you got fence fighting, you got dogs stressing other dogs out. Uh, let's say you're moving dogs around, who gets along with who. You know, you're wasting time and that's a lot of stress. So that's number two, reducing tension between dogs from one dog run to the next. Okay, number three, a dog, <clears throat> a dog run that is inviting to the dog by creating a den-like environment. Now, in my facility, it doesn't take a new dog very long to learn that if I put him in the dog run and let him get used to that first, then when I let him out in the yard and they're exploring the yard, they're doing their business, okay, now they're finished, now I want them back in the run, they just go right back in there because they feel comfortable there. I've created that den-like environment. So that's what number three is about a run that is inviting to a dog by creating a den-like environment that they can retreat to, a run that reduces the stress in the dog and human. Okay, last one, number four, designing a kennel run to be safe, escape-proof, no weaknesses, a run that a dog won't even test. Now, when I designed and built my facility, I took all my experiences, all my knowledge from uh, working with tough working dogs and applied that. And here where I live, there, I board certain dogs with extreme separation anxiety, escape artists. They'll do anything to get out. But they don't even test my runs and it actually relaxes them. <clears throat> so that's number four, designing a, uh, designing a kennel run to be safe, escape proof, no weaknesses. A run that a dog won't even test. A run that will reduce the possibility of injury. Okay, enough chit chat. Let's get working. Okay, what makes a kennel run easy and efficient to clean? The first thing that comes to my mind is floor sloping. So we're going to start down here. Now, on the other side of this door is the kitchen. And underneath the door you may see this ridge that uh, gets larger as we get go to the right. That ridge is at zero, so this hallway slopes towards the kennel runs. Now you may hear different things about how much sloping to put into a kennel run floor. And I think it should vary throughout the kennel depending on the needs. So in walkways like this hallway, like I have, uh, eighth inch per foot drop. Okay, then we accelerate when we get into the kennels here to a quarter inch per foot drop. Now when it gets to the corner here, the corner's raised up a bit so water will drain out. So see, you can vary the uh, sloping throughout the kennel, but you better have good finishers. Okay, let's move on. Uh, you may notice the brackets for the gate panel is, it raises the gate panel up off the floor. So that's important to get, uh, so debris can just flow right underneath it. Okay, but one thing to be aware of, uh, be aware of is the gap right here. Uh, certain size dogs, I've seen this in the past, where they got their legs, they're lying down, got their legs underneath a bar like this, and when they get up, it locks their legs in. And I've had to rush over and pull a dog from, uh, from that situation. 
Dogs don't know enough to relax and pull their, dog, uh, pull their legs out. So you gotta be uh, aware of that. This is about the most you'd ever want in a gap underneath a, a panel. Okay, let's move on. The dog door, offset to one side. Conventionally, kennel doors are in the middle. I've been in kennels before where you're hosing out and you're hosing debris out of one corner and it goes to the next corner. And you have a uh, hose out and goes to the next corner. And all of a sudden you're bouncing this debris back and forth, back and forth, trying to get it out the door. Funny thing is, offset the dog door to one side and you got one corner. Easy to hose out, straight out the door. You'll save a lot of water and time just offsetting the door to one side. Okay, it's early in the morning and it is cold and it is hard to talk. Let's finish up on uh, floor sloping. So, certain male dogs will pee on the exterior gate here and it's usually on this pipe. So, just an idea, may be beneficial from a foot back to slightly slope it uh, to, the ex uh, to the outside. So when they pee, it drains outside rather than back inside where they're gonna track it everywhere. Okay, let's move on. Uh, if you notice, all the concrete sloping to the box, but I'm the only one with a waste management box system. So, I've seen kennel runs where they have a gutter system on the exterior of the kennel run. I've seen uh, kennels where they have it in, inside the building uh, in the hallway of the interior. I've seen kennels where they have it on both indoor, outdoor, and I've seen kennels where they have a gutter system up against the building here where the exterior slopes towards the building and the interior slopes out, very similar to my design. There's a lot of options on the market these days for floor drain grates. So for gutter systems, probably a good idea to match up the dimensions of the gutter to fit the grates that you decide to purchase. Okay, so this is something that I almost did not have installed and I'm glad I did. Here's the interior portion of the kennel run. If you notice, there's a step right here, so the exterior is a little bit lower. Now what this does is act like a brake, so it's less likely for debris and water to go back into the kennel. And that's definitely something to consider. Okay, one more thing. Uh, partition walls, everything's sealed up because nothing's worse than you are cleaning out a kennel, but you're splashing everything into the kennel that you just cleaned, or uh, dogs urinating and it going into the other kennel, and now you gotta clean out two kennels when you just had to clean out one. Okay, we're moving on to reducing tension between one dog run to the next. And the first thing that comes to my mind is partition walls, solid partition walls all the way up for the interior of the kennel and when you come inside that there is no eye contact from any other kennel. Okay, let's move to the exterior. Okay, once again, partition walls, but not all the way up because I want sunlight, air movement, and privacy. And when you calculate, formulate, all that good stuff, it equates to three and a half foot tall uh, solid partition walls on the exterior of the kennels. Okay, creating a den-like environment. Now this is similar to reducing tension from one dog run to the next. Now many years ago in my previous kennel, uh, as I transitioned from dog breeding to dog boarding, that created a need for partition walls so they can't see each other. And I was using materials like stainless steel and plastics and other things. But that made for a flexible wall and sometimes a dog would be leaning against the wall, flexing it, to look over into the next run to see that sensitive dog freaking out. They don't consider that a den-like environment. So when I designed this facility, I wanted uh, solid walls and plus to weld brackets and stuff on them. So I created these walls with steel end caps and concrete, solid, solid walls that eliminated all the issues I had in the past. Okay, let's step inside. Now, once again, it is so critical to not have any kind of eye contact or you're gonna destroy that den-like environment that you're trying to create. Now, music, the right music, can relax dogs 
and dampen distractive sounds. Now I have been in facilities where they do have solid walls all the way up on the inside, but chain links separating the dogs on the outside. And for certain sensitive dogs, that can be so stressful that they won't come outside. So you have to have some kind of balance. Now, sometimes I do get dogs, large dogs, that jump up and peer over. But it's not so stressful that the sensitive dog won't come out and explore the outside of the kennel. Okay, last one, designing a kennel run to be safe. And I think we've covered partition walls enough times. We'll just note that solid partition walls are a part of what makes a kennel run safe. Okay, moving on. All the gaps, all the gaps set at a safe distance. Okay, moving on. Okay, making sure that there is nothing to grab onto, that there's nothing that a dog can get cut on, eliminating all that stuff. Okay, and making sure that no dogs can climb or jump out and get into another pen and injure a dog. So, panels on top, fully enclosed, indoor and outdoor. Okay, so here in America, in the past, we didn't have a lot of options on sizes of chain link, and that's all we had was chain link. So, lots of problems with dogs tugging on it with their teeth and wearing the backside of their canines. Uh, the clamping system made it convenient, so when the fence got so bad, we could just replace it. Later on, I remember tennis courts having problems with b uh, balls getting stuck in the chain link. So then they came out with tennis court mesh. Okay, this is one inch chain link, and it has eliminated all the issues I had in the past. So much so that I just weld it right on the panel. Now, this one inch chain link has good visibility and Small dogs don't tug. Large dogs can't get their teeth or muzzles into it. Now, the manufacturing industry has migrated to a uh, no-climb wire mesh type out of cost efficiencies because they don't need tension bars. They don't need to stretch it. All they need to do is just weld it on. But I've had so much success, and this one-inch chain link is just the right size. And plus, I'm old school. I'm sticking with my one inch chain link. Okay, narrow doors give you more control of situations you may encounter, but you want them wide enough to fit large beds and crates and other things through the door. These gate latches I custom built, very simple and very strong. And if I have both hands busy, I can just use my back pocket to open it up. Okay, we're running out of time. For kennel tips and tricks, I'm gonna limit all the videos to under 15 minutes. And it wasn't until it was too late that I realized that trying to cram all these things into one 15 minute video just wasn't gonna work. Now, I could have split it up into multiple videos, but then I decided against that. Even though there was a lot of things that I wanna cover that got left out. What this video shows me is how much thought, dedication, and hard work needs to go into designing and building a kennel for efficiencies and safety. Kennel Tips and Tricks is not about how to build a kennel just like mine. Uh, my location, the way I constructed my kennel, my clientele, and the way I operate my business is gonna differ from your location, your clientele and your expectations of how a kennel should be built and operated. And restrictions, uh, rules and regulations apply to your kennel by your local government. Now my idea, Kennel Tips and Tricks, is to get people to think. It's about ideas, ideas that can lead to other ideas to resolve issues. Okay, enough said. Uh, if you like what you saw, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and thank you for watching.